A couple of months ago, I was sent a request to create a video where I show my process for dealing with images from a family holiday, how to import, how to tag, all that kind of stuff. So having just returned from Western Australia after 10 days, I figured now is the perfect time to do exactly that kind of video. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 149 of Understanding Darktable. I know I said I would get straight on to doing some videos of Darktable 5 and everything that's new as soon as I got back from Western Australia, but I really want to get this video done because there are things that will become apparent in a minute that I need to do this video now. So you'll, you'll understand in a sec. Now I have already imported the images off my memory cards and to do that it was simply go to the import module, copy and import, set the base film rolls directory to whichever directory you want. In this case, it's my family photos folder and select your device and off you go. So we won't cover that. I'm pretty sure you know how to import images. Once you have imported a multi-day shoot, what Darktable is going to give you is a series of film rolls. And I don't like that for when I am working with a collection of images from a holiday. I want to see the entire holiday's collection of photos in one collection. And the best way to do that is to use capture date and use a date range. And the syntax for that is square bracket, the year that we went on holiday, colon, the month we went on holiday, and the day we departed for our holiday. Semicolon, the year that we came home, colon, the month that we came home, and the day that we came home, and close square brackets. And as you can see, that has narrowed the range down to the handful of film rolls that represent each day that I was shooting while I was on holiday. So if I now click enter, I've got my collection of images from my holiday. So what I can now do is go to the hamburger in the collections module, go store new preset, I'll go 2024-12 Christmas in WA. And that is now a saved collection that I can go back to at any time to just see the images from this particular holiday. The next thing I do is go through the images and tag as rejects anything that I know I am never going to do anything with. Things where the exposure was way off or the focus was way off or the composition was bad or whatever. Anything that I know is an absolute waste of an image, I am going to mark as reject and I'm going to physically delete them from my hard drive. So clearly that one's a reject. So we hit R. Once I've marked out my rejects, I will then filter by rejects here in the light table view, select all, actions on selection, delete trash, yes and those images now have been removed from the hard drive. I then go back to looking at all images and now I can start working my way through the images and marking with one star anything that I think is worth pursuing and anything that jumps out as being a real cracker of a shot I'll immediately mark it with two stars so that I know straight away that, yeah, that's something I definitely am keen to process. The next thing I do is I tag everything. And I know some people will find this monotonous and completely anally retentive, that's just me. I love having tags that help me to find an image somewhere down the track. So I had already started to tag some of these images when this video came to mind. I was like, oh, I should stop and I should do that video whilst I still need to tag all of these things. One of the things that I do tag is the location. And 
I always tag in a hierarchical nature. And the, the way that you do that is to use the pipe character. What I do is I go with country, then state or province, then city or town. And if it's a suburb within a city, then I'll have the city and then the suburb. So in this instance, I already have Australia. I already have Western Australia. I already have Perth, but I need to add a suburb called Henley Brook. So I type in Perth because I know that's the parent tag that Henley Brook will live under. And what I do is I right click on Perth in the list and go create tag and I go Henley Brook, oh, capital B, and we can see it automatically says add to Australia, Western Australia, Perth, which is what we want. Click on save, and now I can go attach tag, and that has attached that tag to both of those selected images. Now, I'm not going to make you sit here while I tag every image in this collection, but I do tag things like the people who are in an image, I tag the location, and if it's a particular event like Christmas, I type in event pipe Christmas. So I have a whole bunch of things that appear under the event tag, and Christmas is one of them. So that way, at some point in the future, if I'm just looking for general family Christmas photos, I can simply search event Christmas, and I can find Christmas photos from multiple years simply based off that tag. I don't have to specify a given year. Obviously, if I want to, I could then do exactly that. So just to demonstrate, I will reset this, go to tag, go wildcard, Christmas, and there are all my Christmas photos. Now, if I wanted to narrow it down to, no, let's say 2005, 2010, I could go narrow down the search, and then we could go capture date and we'd go range 2005 colon uh, sorry semicolon 2010 and now I've just got Christmas photos from those six years make sense beautiful okay so we'll go back to our collection Christmas in WA and we scroll back down to where we were and I can continue now to go ahead and tag all of the other information that I want to tag on these images. All right, once I've finished all of the tagging, something else that I do, and you might again think this is absolutely crazy, is I drop all of these images onto the map because that will embed geolocation coordinates for where they were shot. Now I've got a bunch of images here right at the end of the shoot that were shot in some sand dunes and those sand dunes are called Hartsey's sand dunes. Hopefully they will come up in a search. No they don't. Okay fine. Let's go Durian Bay. That'll at least get me close. And from there, I can zoom in on Hartsey's sand dunes here. And because I've already selected all of those images in the light table view, the selection currently exists. Now, I believe there has been a change to the keystrokes required to select and deselect in the film strip in the map page but I haven't yet got my head around what those changes are. So I am using the light table to select the images that I want to drop and then going to the map. And now all I got to do is just drag that collection of images, drop it on the map wherever I want. And it tells me there's 188 images. I can mouse over that thumbnail and cycle through all the images that were shot at that location. But the reason I do that is because I can now see everywhere that I've shot images over the years uh, by you know adding them to the map and I can see where I've been in the world and you know and I can see all of these thumbnails that represent 
that there were images shot there. You'll notice that some have white text and some have yellow text. White text means all those 188 images are at exactly the same location. Where there is yellow text, it means that is actually a collection of a few different locations that have been grouped together because of how far zoomed out we are. So if we were to slowly zoom in, you will gradually see that all of these locations then spread out to separate locations. But if we zoom out, they eventually bunch up into a collection of 61 images that represents a, an approximate area. Okay, so that's how you can add your images to the map. And once I've gone through all of the images and given them a star rating with one or two stars, I will then go back to the two star images, like so, and I will then start processing those. Once I've processed everything that I've already rated with two stars, I'll then go back to looking at just the one star images and look for the images that fill in the gaps. Anything that didn't automatically get rated a two, some of them will eventually get change to a 2 rating and I will then just start processing those images and once I've processed all of the images that I'm happy with from this particular holiday I will export some of them into my wallpaper folder so that they you know appear as wallpaper on my computer and I will generally throw a copy of them onto my phone so that when I get back to work and people go, how was your holiday? I can show them the photos on my phone. And then I'll generally go ahead and produce a photo book as well so that we have a photo book, a physical photo album to keep forever as a memento of our holiday. So that is my approach to how I deal with my holiday photos. I'm not saying that you have to do any or all of those things it is entirely up to you what works for you works for you uh, that is just my approach so i hope that has been helpful the next video will be uh, new features in darktable 5.0 and i am very excited to get on to that so happy new year everybody i uh, hope uh, santa brought you what you wanted and uh, i hope that 2025 proves to be a fantastic year for you Talk to you in the next one.